Hello again, and welcome back to Maine and get a pointer to a base. <clears throat> Speaking of which, um, I'd like to, uh, before going on talking about this virtual destructor thing, oh, if you, if, if you want to see that tutorial, here I'll, I'll show you. Uh, okay, go into this file here. <clears throat> Here's base. Uh, put the word virtual there, and all your, all your troubles will be over. Okay? So now that tutorial is done. <clears throat> now I'd like to go on to something of critical importance. And uh, perhaps I should use it, get a, just get a whole new project going here. Um, let's see now. I want a new project, and I want to talk about uh, memory, so I'm going to call it memory, I guess. Memory? Okay. Sounds good. Not there. Okay. I don't know why, but double click just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Get rid of that. Um, I mean, when the recorder's on, I can't double click anything. It's really annoying. Okay. Memory and and uh, also I want to mention something about this this here output window. Now, uh, you know how if, if you do something wrong, wrong um, well, or not wrong, or if a warning comes up or something, maybe this will give me a warning, <clears throat> an unreferenced parameter or something. Okay. Now, the, the whatever, depending on what your key settings are well, of course <laughs> yeah well that that should be enough i got to change my uh, default project to so include comma in here but th this should work All right, uh, now I lost my warning. I did. Now these warnings and, and errors and whatnot. If I, if we, however, your keys are set up. Mine is F4. There's a key that takes you to the line, whatever it is. Or if you had the double click feature, you could double click in here. I don't have that feature, unfortunately. <clears throat> okay, now it turns out that, uh, let me just copy this line here. It's really quite silly. Uh, now, where can I put that here? I don't know. Let's see. I don't know if this will this will work or not. No, it might. Oh, oh, but it's already in here. Um, not my. I I I just want this text to show up in the window. Well, well one see one thing you can do is there's a way you can say pragma message. Okay. Cool. Coolio. 
and that should Fragma message causes whatever you put here to get emitted into here. Should be in there. Oh dear. Mess. Mess. That should have been green. Okay, see that there? Now, this, this here text, oh, I didn't put a slot. I need two slots. But it'll probably still work. Oops. I press the wrong key. Now, now I lost my output. Well, I need another slide here anyway. Okay. Now, all, all that is is an echo text, right? If, if I, if, that's not a warning or anything. I'm, I'm just echoing some text. This is text. It'll, it'll just put whatever you type in here. See? This is text. Now, uh, now pressing F4 takes me through the lines, okay, and in this, in, in this case it didn't do anything, but in this case it, it takes me to this line. Well, it turns out that the way that works is, just by the format of the text, because this says memory 5, when I press F4 this should take me to the fifth line of this file. And it has, you see? It didn't take me to this line. But it it, took, it, it, it interprets this as meaning go to line 5 when you, when you sub double click or F4 uh, this in the, in the output window. If I wanted I could change this to uh, whatever, 10 or something. And when I press F4, it'll take me to line 10, wherever that is. Pretty close. Now, <clears throat> that's the reason for this thing. I think it's in here. Here, or either here or in uh, basic. There's a number defined in here called underscore, un here it is, underscore, underscore, FL. Now, th th this is one of these things, okay? Uh, uh, it's probably going to take the whole lesson just to explain this bit, but it, it's okay. There's plenty of time in the world. If I do, um, suppose I make a number defined, and uh, what I would like it to say when I invoke it somewhere uh, is I want to I want to supply it with a a number, and I want it to just display that number as a string or anything. You say. Uh, Usually I call this stirize or something, but let's call it stringy. Stringy. Now the way to turn the thing passed in into a string, usually, is to put a number thing in front. And if you put an X here, and then an X here, and I use this thing, okay. Now the question is, <clears throat> what is what does this evaluate to? Well, it should give me a string with with a value ten, right? Let's see. If this doesn't compile, then it's not true. 
but it compiles and it says 10. Now suppose I had a variable like an int what do you suppose it's going to print out now? You can think about it while, uh, while it's compiling. Well, all this thing does is convert whatever is in here into a string. So it's certainly not going to print out 10. It's going to print out i. Okay, fair enough. What about this? If I made a number defined called 10, right? Now, is it going to print out the letter i? Or is it going to insert this number defined into this number defined? That is the burning question. Let's see. We still get i. Now the question is, how is it, you know, I should leave this as a puzzle, but you know, you know the answer, you've seen it. So, um, so, so I'll call this num or something, some number. In fact, I want to use a special number. Uh, and I'll show you that number in a minute. Well, I can add that to this printer. Make it a printer. Now we know that's a string, right? And the next thing I'm going to put here is a, an actual number. It's predefined. I think it's. Two underscores, is it two? Yeah. yeah. The underscore underscore line um, is the line number where this instruction is. Uh, D equals, oh, oh, this one's a string too. Okay. So that's good. <clears throat> okay, now these are both strings. Oh, yeah. Maybe it was. It is a number, I think. Now, let's see. Now it's going to complain again. Well, I don't know. Uh, well, we'll see. Oh, yeah, it's definitely not a string. It is a, it's just a number. Okay, number and 18 is the actual number printed out here. Now, what happens if I put that in here? What do you think it's going to print out? <laughs> yeah, it took it. It took me years to not years, but a long time to figure this one out. And it bugged me for ages. I couldn't get the darn thing to, to put what I want, right? I want to be able to print out uh, the line number using a number defined. But when I put this line number defined thing into the stringy thing, it just g gives me the, the literal text. And how do, so how do you fix that? Right? The same problem exists with this number. You can see why, right? What I'd like to do is make a string, right? Because there's another special macro built in called file. And if you can comp combine file 
with the line number, right, then you can make yourself a message that when you double click on it will take you there. Right? I'm almost there. All I gotta do is get that number 10. Well, in fact, number is what I want. Line, I mean. Line's the thing I want. I write file. I'm halfway there. But it won't do it. <clears throat> now, the answer to that. The secret answer is to do it again. What's the secret? Everybody knows this by now, probably. Okay. Now, if I use this string, this line, now let's see what happens. So it's going to take line, right, into this, and it's all it's doing is then doing that again. See? Now, this stringy of line turns this into a string with the number line, which is exactly what I need to build this string. You see what I'm saying? So, going back to this macro, that's exactly what this does. It just calls an underscore version of this thing with the, in this case, line, oops, wherever it went. Yeah, line. So now we go file, open bracket, and then the line number close bracket, space, colon. That's all it needs. After that, uh, it's going to be this format. So, this is the way, this is why I have that macro. Usually if you want to leave yourself a message like a to-do or something. Uh, don't forget to fix this function. Okay. Now all you do is compile and you'll see here's here's the output in the in the mem in the uh, output window. I press F4 or double click if I could, and it takes me there. Not to be in any any file. I could, I could put one. I could put this over here. You know, some place that I, I I know that I'm gonna forget how to get back to. And I press F4 and oh, I forgot. I gotta fix this thing. So, now that's one thing. Also note, note that this says zero errors and zero warning. What if I just say warning in here? Hmm. Maybe I need more specific. What is their warning look like? I know it just uses the text. I want it to look like theirs. Warning space and then C and then some numbers and colon. It should tell me I got a warning. Yeah, look, see? One warning. I made my own warning. I don't know if I could make it say error. <laughs> I'm gonna try that.
error, the warning, one error, but it succeeded. You see, it's not, it's not doing it. If it this printout doesn't matter. It's totally independent of what the compiler is doing. All it's doing is parsing this text. And, and this jumping around business, it's not any, any magic. It, it just uses this output window. So this output window is something you can use for yourself. Whoops. To, um, to, to bring yourself or, uh, to certain, uh, places. Now one of the things, and I'm gonna run out of time, but I'm gonna tell you about next time. But one of the things you can use that back for uh, is through using a macro, um, you can define a version um, of the like malloc and all the, the various allocating functions uh, so that <clears throat> so that you can you can find out. Uh, for instance, if there's a memory leak, you can work it out in such a way that this output window will take you exactly to the line where the memory leak was allocated. Okay, and I'll show you that next time. That's why this is called memory. And uh, see you then.